So welcome back to this part three and this is when I got to Mauritius. So when I got to Mauritius, oh my goodness, I, I went through the customs and then I was pulled aside, you know, like among the queue, I was the one who was randomly picked. <laughs> so I was taken into a room. I had never traveled overseas, guys. So I had no idea that this is how they do things. I was asked to open my suitcase and they were looking and I was thinking, oh my gosh, what did I do? I was starting to freak out. By this time, I was really nervous and shaking, thinking, oh my gosh, this man has already put drugs in my suitcase. <laughs> what did he do? You know, like, it's like I started thinking, has anybody touched my suitcase? You know, like all those sort of things. But yeah, they were like, it's okay, ma'am. If you, if you know you haven't done anything, you don't have to be worrying, you know, just calm down. We're just doing random checking and all that. And I kept asking them, why did you not ask anyone else? Just me. Anyway, they asked me if I was coming to see who and where I was staying and all those sort of things. So you need to be on top of that. Like you need to remember your itinerary and have it like printed as well or on your phone and show them like everything because they need to make sure that it's true, like where you're going. Anyway, after that, I was like there for 45 minutes. I was so stressed and shaking and thinking this man probably has even left me or he's put me into trouble and I'm never even, there is no man. <laughs> anyway. I, was, I was outside and there was an African girl sitting over there waiting for someone. I'm like, that's not her. Surely that's not her. Yeah. Because where is Mumbi? <laughs> you know, I knew Mumbi's face. That's yeah. not Mumbi. You know, but eventually you came through the doors. Yes. And when I went through the door, I remember it's like, you know, like a big load has just been lifted off your shoulders because after being in there, like I felt very intimidated. Uh, but it's because Mauritius, I think there is some naughty things that happen from continent to continent and it becomes a very... Yeah, it's, it's a multinational travel point. Yeah, exactly. So they are and quite so strict. Very strict. Yeah, yeah. So that was all good. I went out and the very first person I saw was a giant man that I knew and I just went like literally running with my suitcase. I just needed like, just tell me I'm okay after all that incident, you know, and he gave me this huge hug. He was actually huge than I thought. Like I was like, oh, he's my giant and so good looking. He was so toned up. Ooh. I was like, whoo, he looks so hot. And we kissed. <laughs> Do you remember that? Could I forget? We kissed. And then, you know, special. like the taxi driver took my, oh, beautiful taxi, by the way. Um, the taxi driver took my luggages and put them in the car. And he was telling me, oh, we've been, he's been here for two hours waiting for you. And I'm so good at waiting. No. And I was like, <laughs> two hours, guys. Ooh, my checklist. <laughs> Because he had said, I will be there no matter what. I yeah. will be waiting on the other side. And you're worth The fact that he was there, then the taxi driver two hours, another check. <laughs> so and we got to the hotel. Apart from that initial sort of scary moment, yeah. you know, like we just had a ball. Um, we did. And we just clicked. It was like we knew each other, which we did. But the fantasy became a reality and... Mauritius is a beautiful island and, mm. you know, we just hung out around the pool and we hired a scooter and yeah. toured around with Mumbi on the back around Mauritius and, you know, had little adventures. Do you remember me asking you, do you know how to, <laughs> do you know how to ride a scooter? <laughs> and you were like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I got this. I'm like, I'm, I've never <laughs> been carried by one, you know, like, <laughs> I was really like nervous about well, you, you riding nervous. around. When we burn her leg on the muffler, that was a bit of an Probably incident. because I was too nervous. But um, we had to run around and find some ice to, I think I, tied, I took my shoe off, took a sock off, found, went to about four different shops to find something frozen, stick it in the sock and tie it around Mumbi's leg for the, for the burnt car. Oh, guys, after I got burnt, this guy, like he stopped the scooter and he was going like to the shops, you know, like, do you have ice? Do you have ice? In my heart, I'm like, oh my gosh. This man, <laughs> check. <laughs> Another check. <laughs> what, what, what do you need that a damsel in distress? You know, yeah. something to do. 
Yeah, I know. And then you brought the ice in the sock. Oh, and that felt better. And something else I forgot. So when we got to the hotel, um, there were the porters that carried the luggages. And Ross was like, it's all right. I've got her. I'll carry her. Oh, I was like, he's going to carry my bags. Oh, but how about Check. this? <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about Mumbi. I'm saying, you better call your mum. And Mumbi's like, hmm. Oh, yes. This is when we got... <laughs> So her sister so knew very, she was going to Mauritius. Babe, can I say, the very first thing after we got to the hotel, Roscoe's like, um, call your mom, just let her know that you're in safe hands. Guys, check. <laughs> Someone is telling me to call my mom. And then I was like, oh, my mom doesn't actually know, but my sisters do. <laughs> he was like, what, what do you mean? My, your mom doesn't know. <laughs> And I was like, because if I told my mom, I would not be here today. He was like, okay, ring your sisters, let them know that you're okay. And now, part four of this, watch out.